The poem is not the world. It isn't even the first page of the world. But the poem wants to flower like a flower. It knows that much. He, it wants to open itself like the door of a little temple so that you might step inside and be cool and refreshed and less yourself than part of everything. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm gonna say this too. There's no interval, there's a bathroom right there and there's water at the back and just feel you can get up whenever you want. Okay.
to meet him. Yeah. Yeah. Reminds me of my uh, times in Spain. So to uh, transition into more poetry and non non flamenco uh, uh, offerings, um, I'm going to uh, do a little, little bit of Garcia Lorca, Lorca poetry with some uh, improvisation. Kind of morph into uh, kind of more of a wide variety of moods here. Victor Hugo, which was so moving that every time 
I see a homeless person in Seattle, which you do everywhere. This, these lines go through my head. I met a man on the street, a very poor man, who was in love. His hat was old, his coat was out at the elbows, the water passed through his shoes, and the sun shone through his soul. Homeless woman in Asheville. There was dancing to the beating of skins in the town square, the inhabitants letting go in musical freedom, slumped in a damaged check shop stroller, a homeless woman, the white jurisdiction of her eyes roaming the faces of passers-by. She had starlit slippers of a bride's discarded moment, peeping from the frayed and tattered blankets. I asked her if I could take a photo of her elegance, of what she prized against diversity. She pushed them out further into the cold for her own view, her own satisfaction, her own thrilled inspection. Then settled down for sleep without toothpaste or moisturizer or any foreplay to the sound of everyone else's living. Yes, of course. We all do, everywhere we turn. 
<laughs> if you mean children under 26, say so. Papers shuffle into themselves, evading eye contact, which feels vindictive. Medical costs, how many? Panic, no receipts, only reminiscent scraps of purgatory, if you think in pictures. Tell me they are white swans, and I would gladly count them. I have torn the perforated lines on the 1099, now upside down with no relation to itself. And what good is the biggest fucking calculator to satisfy decimal points, tiny crumbs of dollars? So next year, Joanne, I'm going to hire a gardener <laughs> on the ground floor. We can talk about flowers and where the seeds can be best planted, how new grass needs the sun, We'll discuss the wind on the pampas grass and how the fig tree loves the secluded stone on which it leans. And then we can talk about robins and other local birds. By that time, tax season will have vanished among blossoms and nettles. With any luck, the IRS have found a new way to work, lying out in the fields watching how the morning dew mirrors the universe. <laughs> P.S. Joanne, what's wrong with a pro with approximate? <laughs> At Healing Circles Langley, we have a, a poetic apothecary, and we have themes. And one of the themes was what holds me together. It is not childhood's muddled accounts, diffuse and fleeting like the train going north from Robin's Egg to Heather, nor Jack in the pulpit's shocking thrust through the forest's growth, nor the wind on the craggy moor blustering my name. A mother's advice, slim pickings now. Flowers keep me in love with a god who might like me and my difficult angel. The swath of mountains stretch the eye to upper realms of blessing, like the first woolly sweater in the chill of fall. A light in the window full of books passes by. I might like to meet the readers. No word for the pure silk of a kiss that cranks up the romance. What holds me together is a cup of tea the answer to Anglo-Saxon stiff upper lip, lodged in the eyes of the old man struggling against the wind, the uncensored laughter of children, the human face that takes the soul off guard, blows it open, and in that glimpse, the discarnate, truer than the comforts that falsely hold me. Before the moon was a moon, she was just a tear in the sky. The broken light around her gathered the pain and the uncertainty of the earth. She gathered the hope and the pining that she saw. And this went on and on for a large portion of eternity. Then one day, she suddenly blossomed into a flower of light, an orb of beauty. And in her untouchableness, she remained. As she passed in gentle spins and flickerings, she said, people of water, oceans, and undecipherable elements of fire, come with me with your eyes. Take me into your hearts. I too am just a child, innocent and full of majesty. So when the moon slips into the windows of your eyes, 
It fills the vastness of your soul, your secret selves. Know that you too are pregnant with the cold fires of stars, plunged into the company of ancestors in perfect ruins, into the little hands of your infant mother's grasp, into the wild and furious tears of stillness. Use the sky as a familiar blanket around your shoulders and disappear frequently in the sweet luminosity of the dark gardens of your name. So this is a uh, stone lantern here. I'm going to ask my guitar to join me.
what is your pain level out of 10? Her fingers, her fast fingers waiting to classify your existence on a screen. Her young face oblivious of the bend you have just rounded, the diminishing road ahead. What number gets you oblivion? Like boarding a train to Scotland, your life handed over to passing sheep, hills and small sea towns. Who is not altered by a roundabout of wild flowers, or the wren's beak stuffed with worm calligraphy? Ask me instead who I am, what my mornings are like. If I'm working towards a future, who in my life has just died? If you don't have time and you're backing out of the room with your computer, at least ask me if I drink alone. There is no load line you can hear with your stethoscope. Next time, let's begin with the Bushman greeting. Good day. I saw you coming from afar, and I am dying. Regret. From city slums, rivers carry debris through pristine meadows, and one leaf descends. As one leaf descends, does it mourn, summer or short? If I take a minuscule measurement, yesterday was not remarkable. Nothing got done in the Congress of my day, and moments passed like angels I neglected to admit. Sometimes there is muscular remorse to unstitch. I have pondered these regrets, scuttling along the streets. Someone bends down to pick one up, reads the moral of the story, tucks it into her pocket like a dead talisman from a dead hero. We float upwards. It is the historical imagination. Alternately, I might drop them one by one at security before boarding the final flight. <laughs> this poem is called Boy and the Swan. This is written for my grandson, Jack. Overcome by the swan's elegance, the little boy leans in to give her the flower he is holding, stem and petals cast out towards her as she continues parallel with the wind. Its limp attempts drift from the circle of her wake. More than anything, he wants to give her something of himself, to reach within the compass of the white fortress of her being, to be known by her loveliness. When does the heart first begin to stir for the world? Fledgling love, untampered, the very heart of God's enigma. This summer, I had the most wonderful opportunity of going to Cortez Island which is much, much quieter than Whidbey Island. In fact, Rick says it's like, it's like, um, Whidbey is like Cortez on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> but you get the sense there that the animal world is more dominant, more important than the human world. And so I was lucky, I went out in the kayak quite often, and I wrote three poems, and I'm just gonna read one, kayaking. Hauling the boat over rocks, your unshod feet tenderized by barnacles and embalming seaweed's oily flowers, cushioned in a rusty undergreen. Take all of yourself, your whole story. The, the past hour's neurosis into this small container and be no more than blue to where the water is turning silver at the meeting of currents. When you are far enough away from the cabin, the dog, the
the washing, drying the afternoon. Let the paddles rest and rock and be taken. You are more than you ever imagined. Look at the horizon in the mist below, the mountains, the silent islands communicating from familiar distance. Can you go on living your life on the shore as if the kitchen of things mattered? Drifting in unhitched expanse, you belong elsewhere. Sooner or later, in a random hour, released into unfamiliar territory, with no idea of its mind-blowing contours, untangle from the morning's imperative and paddle out of your mind to an intimacy beyond yourself. Somewhere in a room far away, a man cries for me. Maybe on a train or on a bench, he wears my, te my tears, public and confidential. In the hour of less forgetting, he is the surrogate for the war I cannot display. Somewhere in a sea of people, he sings my laughter at a restaurant or a theater. He breaks into a jolly sound for me. He paces hallways and stands by windows, peering out. He feels my apathy deeply, as if it were his own. And the longing I feel for you is bursting from his eyes. He feels my lover's hand, the body glove of memory. He writes letters from my mind and signs them in earnest with the pen of anonymity. If I ring the church bell or the death bell, he listens from the seaside and answers me by chime or distant moon. Somewhere in a lifetime far away, he plays a lone violin for me. He shapes anthems for strangers, the untranslated heart. He has a house in my chest that is sinking, and sometimes I feel my gravity through the levitations of stars, and in those times I let the whole world in. I open all the doors. In that moment, you can see me dancing songs, the doubling of my soul. You can feel me warming your aloneness with mine. Somewhere in a room far away, a man smiles for me. Maybe on a bridge or a stair in a hidden island town, he moves my human mouth when it's sometimes difficult to feel. This poem is called Second, The Second Wind. And this was written for a really stunning book that um, Jerry Winstrom is almost finished. Um, I think it's a coffee table book. Right? The Second Wind. A primordial yearning motors your life, defines your talents, allegiances, and capacity for love. God forbid you ignore its persistence. Too fascinated by neon diversions, you will recognize it by the shoes you refuse to wear. Company you cannot keep. Things you find yourself saying. Love for poetry, the human face, need for solitude. Perilous to be thwarted 
redesigned by some lesser architect. When the second wind batters the north window, don't ignore its power on the headland of your life. Let go. Admit its full force. Now is not the time to shrink. Your posture operatic, your mood excited. You bloom and bloom again on city streets, blessed and double blessed. So I have revived uh, a poem uh, that I used to perform with, uh, with um, I, I call them song poems, guitar with poetry together. And um, for some reason, I can't understand, it was 20 years ago I used to play this. It happened at the time. Uh -huh. <laughs>
So we were um, going back and forth on poems, and Judith was, do you have a love poem? <laughs> and I thought, you know, there was one. She a love poem once, so. <laughs> I've never read this in public, actually. But I'm going to start out, um, I'm going to do two very, very short ones, and then one called Confession. And I'm going to book it here. This one's called Maybe If. Maybe love is a, and we are the. I tend to think it's, and we are only here too. Then of course, no one really, I guess if we all, then maybe. <laughs> Confession. I am fragile about you. I am powerful about you. I am a hurricane about you. Sometimes a timid swallow. There is a lioness in your eyes, almost gold. A clustering of tristanous clouds. For me, your presence is more precious than invisible things. For, you, for me, your smile makes pale the moon. Against the darkness I dream into you. My thoughts are sweet blades permeating your compulsions. I will be your doctor, your child, divulge your wounds and spill yourself on me. Break into a rain and fall into my embrace. Pour yourself against my constant face. I will hold your weight against, I will hold your weight until your body caves open in joy. My porcelain arm will shatter from your suffering, yet still I will hold you with the pieces of all my pieces. 
broken and content. I am moved about you. I almost put I love you into words last night, but I held my tongue and kept it in my eyes. Here's another theme we had in the poetic apothecary, and that was abundance. And I thought, what am I going to write about abundance? Abundance leaps from the Latin abundia, the verb abandare, a shitload, three bags full, a host, quantities, scores, a slew, oodles of blackberries, single mellow moon and sovereign sun and the night sounds from the marshes to catch a shoe. Lace and light of matins, diffuse in the chapel of birdsong. The countryside looks through your window, your open door. Do you have any idea how expensive you are? The industry it takes to keep you amazed and grateful. Oh, Lordy Lord. <laughs>